An NBC News poll from earlier this year found that only 33 percent of Republican primary voters say they support Trump more than they support the Republican Party. 62 percent say they support the party over Donald Trump. So are Republicans making a mistake when they assume that defending Trump is their only option? Joining us now is Stuart Stevens, former chief strategist for the Mitt Romney for President campaign in 2012. He is now with the Lincoln Project and is also the author of It Was All a Lie, How the Republican Party Became Donald Trump. Stuart Stevens, thank you for joining the program. I just, given the title of the book... <laughs> I wonder where you think the party stands in this moment. I mean, certainly there are, you know, some 33% of the GOP are Trump diehards. But what about that 62% that are going to witness the unfolding of potentially a historic criminal indictment? I mean, where do you think this leaves them in their support for Donald Trump? You know, I think that poll is a little misleading because the Republican Party has become Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's not really much of a choice. There's no anti-Trump movement of any size in the Republican Party. What happens if you oppose Trump? You're, you're Liz Cheney. They throw a Cheney out of the party. So it's an easy thing to say, well, I don't support Donald Trump. You know, I support the party more than Donald Trump when you're really saying the same thing. Look, I, this is where the Republican Party has ended up. It began when they accepted Donald Trump. When Donald Trump went out and called for a Muslim ban in December of 2015, everyone knew in the party that if the party stood for anything, it was the Constitution. This was a religious test. They knew this, but they didn't stand up to Trump. And, you know, there was this thing that the Republican Party used to say when I worked in it, the character counts. And that was right. And this is now all unfolding. And it's just beginning. After all, the majority of the Republican Party does not believe that Joe Biden is a legally elected president. So play that out. What does it mean? It means they live in an occupied country. Mm. So that only not only gives them a reason to do whatever it takes, to some it gives them an obligation. And I, I think this is, is just beginning. I think the Republican Party is shameful in not standing up for the rule of law, which is what this is. The reason there's a former president being indicted is because the Republican Party nominated and elected a criminal. It's no more complicated than that. What do you think, you know, one of the things that Trump has been saying in recent days is, if they can get me, they can get you. Can you unpack that a little bit for me and, and why you think that is so resonant with the GOP in this particular moment? Well, it's all about uh, grievance. The organizing principle of the Republican Party now is fear. Think about it. It's fear of these hordes coming over the border. It's fear of the rapists and uh, the criminals coming from Mexico. It's fear that there are these large, powerful forces in the world out there that have control us. That we're, you know, when the party once believed, like when Ronald Reagan was president, if you were born in America, you had won life's lottery. There were inequalities in America, but nobody was disadvantaged because they were American. That's now been turned on its head. And Trump, to be born in America, means that you're a victim. You're a chump. There are these powerful forces out there. So once you become the, into this vic victim's mentality, that's what Trump is rallying. And really, it's, it's all about race. It's always been about race. Um, when they tried to, all the votes that they said that they were illegal on January 6th, when 57% of the party voted not to certify the election. Where were they? Atlanta, Detroit, Philadelphia. Why were they suspect? Because they were predominantly African-American votes. So, you know, the country's headed to become a minority majority party. There's nothing that the Republican party can do to stop that. And what you're seeing here is playing out is this sort of attempt to stop uh, the inevitable. Yeah. And instead of doing what the party should have done, which is do the hard work to appeal to these non-white voters, um, they've gone the other way. It's pretty much officially a white grievance party now. 
Do you think there's any room for other Republicans to criticize Trump in this hour at all? I guess I'm, I'm looking at Governor Ron DeSantis, who was sort of with a wink and a nod mentioned the phrases porn star and hush money as much as he could this week. Do you think he will be punished for that, even though it wasn't even an outright criticism of Trump, but just a nod to the absurdity and tawdriness of what's happening here? You know, I think the real test here is going to be, is Ron DeSantis going to say that Joe Biden won a free and fair election? I mean, that we're even talking about that is so extraordinary. Um, he hasn't said that. He said that Joe Biden, he accepts Joe Biden as president. So they have to stand up to Trump if they're really going to try to say that the party has to go in a different direction. But they won't do it. Mitch McConnell won't even say Donald Trump's name. And they're all saying that they will support Donald Trump if he's the nominee. Even after what happened on January 6th, even when we know that the Russians backed him. So what do you do with that? I, I don't see how that's any sort of definition of patriotism or putting the country first. It's putting the party first for power. Stuart Stevens, former Republican consultant with a dire prognosis for the GOP. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Really appreciate it. Thank you.